Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hi guys, welcome to week four of Beauty Bootcamp. Today we are talking about highlight, contouring, and blush. I can't believe we are halfway through this bootcamp. If you have missed any of the videos, they're forever on YouTube, so you can watch them, rewatch them, take notes, all the above, share them. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. As you can see, I've already done my foundation. That was last week's. You're going to notice that I'm gradually going to be building up and that's how I'm going to start my face is what last week, what we talked about. So from here, what we're doing is we're going to be starting to add those highs and those lows. When you put on your foundation, especially if you're using one shade, then you are kind of flattening your face. Okay. You're taking away any of those natural highlights, any of those natural contours. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add them back in. So I like to have a palette like this. I do powders. Okay. You can absolutely do creams. Creams are beautiful if you have dry skin, if you have more mature skin. For me, I personally love to use powders. Again, this is all personal preference. Use what works for you. What I'm gonna first use is gonna be my contour. So if we're a contour shade, you want something cool toned for your skin. Okay, so for me, this one is perfect. This is from Lime Life by Alcone. This is a number two bronzer. I love it because it is matte. If you are contouring with a bronzer, you want it to be matte. You do not want it to be shimmery at all and don't have any warmth. This one is perfect because it is a cool tone as well as being matte. So everybody's face shape is different, but what's great is our bone structure kind of does the work for us. Of course, if you want your face to look different, then you absolutely can do that. So it really depends on your face shape. So like my face shape is an oval. There's hearts, there's diamonds, there are oblongs, there are square, there's rectangle, like there are all different kinds of face shapes. And the way that you highlight and contour is definitely dependent on your face shape. Knowing your bone structure is going to help you so much when it comes to makeup. It just really is, and it's not just knowing everybody's bone structure because unless you are doing makeup on other people but you need to know your bone structure and you're going to hear me say that a lot throughout this course is follow your bone structure your bone structure never changes your skin does as we age we lose elastin we lose collagen things start sagging on us so our skin does change as we get older but our bones never do so always go with your bones so what we're going to do is we are going to feel very gently. So we have our temple right here. You can feel it's right where it kind of has a dip in your skull right there. That is your temple. You're going to keep going back down and then you're going to feel another ridge go down. That is where your cheekbone ends. So you actually have a ridge and it's kind of like a little, a little thing like this. <laughs> I very technical, right? So you're feeling and you can feel right where that valley where it ends. Okay. So a lot of times where that is, is it actually lines up with the top of your ear. Most times I'm not going to say every time because there's always going to be that one person who likes to be different um, and prove me wrong, but you're going to, it's a lot of times it really does start with your ear. And so you're just going to draw a line down. Now, I personally like to stop right at my my brow. And so I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to do one side of my face to show you what it looks like. And the other side is going to show you, you know, without everything. So I'm going to take a fan brush. I love a fan brush for this because it gets it right in that spot. This is a Lime Life number 16 brush. All right. And I am going to go in with that shade Get off any excess, just like we would really with anything. And I'm going to follow that line right there. All right. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth on here. As you can see, because it is that cool tone, it is going to mimic the shadows. Shadows are cool. So you want it to mimic a shadow because that's what you're doing. Okay. So we're just kind of going over that. If you need to build it up, absolutely do that. And now what we want to do is we also want to bring it right on our temple. Okay, so I'm just kind of bringing that 
right on our temple and then I kind of go backwards. Okay, so I kind of want to blend it into my hairline. Again, with this, if you have a large forehead, this is really going to help push that forehead back. Remember, contouring is all about pushing things back. The darkness pushes things back into the background. So if you want to minimize things and push them back to make them look smaller, then same thing with your neck. If you want to chisel out your neck, make it look more prominent, anything like that, then I am just going to put it down here and then blend down. Okay, that's going to help hide any turkey neck. It's going to help any tacos. <laughs> just going to kind of give you a slimmer jawline. I'm going to do the same thing with my nose. I use the same brush for this. So I'm going to dip in there. I squeeze it. And then I am going to go on either side of my nose. Now, I have a small nose. So if you have a larger nose, you're going to want to go more on top of your nose than on the side. This is kind of in the middle of it because I do like my nose. I just want to add a little bit of depth back into my nose that the foundation took away. I'm also going to put a little bit right here underneath my bottom lip. That is just going to bring this guy out a little bit more. It's going to kind of recede this. So it's going to make you look like you have a poutier lip. But can you tell the difference from this side to this side? This side just looks like I have like the high, the lows it back into my face. I actually have a cheekbone again where this kind of just drops off, right? So that is our contour. Again, follow your bone structure. Think of it in the shape of a three. Okay. And a lot of times it will be like this, but again, like I said, depending on your face shape, it may be a little bit different, but follow it in the shape of a three is a great starting point. On here, we are going to go on to blush. All right. So blush is important because it brings back the youthfulness into your face. There's a lot of people who skip blush and I, I, I just say don't. Okay. Don't skip blush. Blush is so important for bringing back that youthfulness and then the glow in your face. So I'm going to be using this powder right here. This is a perfect dupe for Nars's Orgasm Blush, which is a cult favorite. This is called Possible by Limelight by Alcone. And I'm just going to dip in here. Look at all that fallout. I would have been too much, right? So you're going to bring this and then you are going to start actually back here right on top of that contour. So right above it, we are gonna bring that and just start back here. The concentration is gonna be here. A lot of people put it here. And a lot of times you can look like a clown because you can overdo it, you can be heavy handed. If you start back here, it's easier to kind of blend out. So I'm gonna do here and then gently go toward the apples of my cheeks. So you're just gonna go and just keep blending that out. Put a little bit on your temples. This is called draping. Remember, when we blush naturally, it doesn't just come right here. It comes all around our eyes. And so, like, you want to mimic that. Do not drop lower than your contour. Now, sometimes if you get heavy-handed with your blush and you're like, oh, it's a little too much for me, that is totally okay. I'm going to show you how to kind of tone it down. What you're going to do is you're going to take your pressed powder. This is actually a tester palette. I love them because I use it actually for eyeshadow as well. That is another video for another day. But this color right here goes perfectly with my foundation. So I'm just going to get that onto a powder. And then you can just gently go over it. It's What it's going to do is it's going to tone down that blush, but also it's going to help everything just kind of really blend together. That way it looks a little bit more natural and not so much like, bam, here's a whole bunch of blush. One thing that I didn't mention is bronzer. Absolutely, you can add bronzer on here. For me, uh, it's winter. Bronze doesn't really make sense for me for winter, but that's just me, my personal opinion. If you love bronzer, absolutely get bronze. Okay, so a bronzer is definitely going to be more warm in color. It's also possibly going to have a shimmer to it. Not all bronzers have shimmer to it, but a lot of them do. But the main thing to look for is something that is warm because it is going to warm up your face. Now, if you do have a foundation that maybe is a little bit too light for you, you're kind of right there. It's spring. You're still in your winter shade, not quite your summer shade, but you do want to warm it up just a bit. 
a bronzer is going to be a great way to do that. I am going to show you guys today how to do that. So take a big fluffy brush. A big fluffy brush is key for this because you do want it to be nice and soft. You are going to put this just on the outer side. You are not going to bring it into your face at all because you kind of want it to be where the sun hits. So I'm going to take it, hit off any excess, and then I am just going to do it the same thing. Just kind of work it into my forehead, pushing it back into my hairline. So you can already tell that is so much warmer. Normally you could absolutely do this before blush. Don't forget to take that brush that has some of your powder on there if you need it just to kind of help blend everything together. So now we are going to highlight. Highlight is one of those things that I personally, I love the glow drops or like a liquid a little bit better than the powder. Powder can get too cakey, okay? It can look like it's sitting on top. If you are using powder, then what I would actually do is recommend you put it on before your blush. Why? Because when you put your blush over it, it's actually going to blend it in. It's going to make it sink into your skin. So it's not going to look like it's just sitting on top and just kind of hanging out there. It's going to actually become one with your skin. Okay, so for what I'm using today, I am using the Glow Drops in the color Champagne from Lime Life by Alcone. I love these. Okay, these have coconut milk in them. And so what that does, it actually plumps up the skin at the same time like you're putting it on. So it's adding moisture in there, but it also makes it just melt into your skin. So you aren't getting that cakiness. It comes one with it and it really just makes your skin look gorgeous and glowy. So I'm going to take a little bit of that, put it onto my finger. And then this time I will smile for this because I want it right on the ridge. Okay, so right on that ridge here, I'm gonna kind of put it here. I know that's a lot to go in first, but we're gonna take our beauty sponge and then I'm just gonna kind of blend out in both directions. Look at that. Oh, isn't that amazing? It just completely just melts into your skin. So the thing with highlight, highlight what you wanna do is you want to put it on spots that the sun naturally hits your face. So again, here, that's why when I'm turning my head, you can see it. It's just like the sun is hitting there. Another place that you want to put it is right just barely on your nose and then kind of blending it out. That's where the sun hits, but you don't want it so much that you look like you have a disco ball on your tip of your nose. And that's the only thing people are going to look at. You want just a little bit like the sun is bouncing off your nose. Okay, another place is right where these come together, right here. I'm gonna put it right there. That is kind of the bridge of your nose. And again, I'm gonna do it up and down. Okay, that's how you can also make sure you don't get too much. Just put one and then blend it out. Another spot is right here above your eyebrow. That's gonna lift your eye. It's gonna make you just look glowy. Okay, if you're noticing, I'm kind of keeping right in the center of my face right here. And then I always put it above my Cupid's bow. With your highlight, you kind of want to focus really with all of it. You want to imagine that you have a heart shape on the center of your face. Okay, the middle of the, the heart is going to be where the light, you want the lightest part of your face, okay? That's gonna slim your face, but it's also gonna bring the attention to your eyes, to your lips, the parts that we really want people to focus on, right? So that's where that heart is gonna be. On the outside of the heart is gonna be the darker. So that's why we have our contour. The highlight and contouring love placement. <laughs> that sounds so cheesy, but you guys get what I'm saying, okay? And then when you are trying to think of where to put everything, then think of a Neapolitan ice cream. So we are going hearts, okay? We are going Neapolitan ice cream. I am, hopefully this is helping and give you guys visuals. So we have our chocolate with our contour. We have our strawberry with our blush. And then that vanilla is our highlight. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a translucent powder. If you have a beauty sponge that has a flat tip on it, you can absolutely use that. Mine is curved, so I'm gonna take a flat brush and I'm gonna take some of that translucent powder. If you have a loose powder, this works great for that too. And then 
I'm going to, so right there is that bone. So I'm going to go right kind of underneath it, push these sideburns back. All right. And then I'm just going to draw a straight line. Okay. And I'm not drawing it too far. I kind of just want to just a little bit focusing on the back part and then you can blend down. Now that I have it on, I'm going to let it set. Okay. I want it to do its magic. I'm letting it set. Right. Now that it's set for a little bit, I'm just going to take a brush and kind of start back going down first and then back and forth. But you can see it just cleaned that up. It doesn't look as messy. So it's okay if you make mistakes, it's just makeup. All right, so let's take a look at this two sides of my face. Okay, so this side of my face just has the foundation on and that's it, okay? It's very one dimensional, it's just there, right? Now let's look at this side. It has highs, it has lows. It's no longer one dimensional. It is now a four dimensional living, breathing face. Okay. So that really is the key to highlight and contouring. It doesn't have to be hard. A lot of people are so scared of highlight and contouring because I feel like, you know, the Kardashians made it just look like it has to be chiseled and it has to be just right. Guys, no, it's all about just adding back the highs and the lows. I know I keep saying that. You can keep it as natural or you can go as glam and extra as you want. But the main thing through all of it is just adding shape back into your face. That's all you're doing. It's not scary at all. So things to remember, the three when you are doing contouring. If you are using a powder highlight, do it first after your contour, okay, before your blush. That way it blends in there. Otherwise, you're going to do it after, okay? So with your blush, you are going to start back here, right on top of, just go right above that contour, have the most concentration back here, blend it toward the apples of your cheeks. You also want to blend it into your temples because you want to mimic the look of if you're actually naturally blushing. Then with highlight, you wanna put that right on the spots, the highs of your face, like the sun is hitting it, okay? So again, it's right on the ridge there, nose, bridge, brow, chin, bow. <laughs> Don't forget to set with your favorite setting spray. Again, you're going to see I do this in steps. I want my makeup to be locked in. So we're just going to set it with our favorite setting spray. All right, guys, time for your homework. If you have never highlighted and contoured before, give it a shot. That's going to be your huge homework this week is give highlight and contouring a shot. It's going to be less scary than you really thought. And it's going to make a huge difference when it comes to your makeup routine. If you have highlighted and contoured before, try something new. Research your face shape and put apply your highlight contour and blush according to your face shape. So that is it for this week. I can't wait to see your homework assignment submissions. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm not a teacher, guys. But make sure you are using the hashtag Beauty Army. That way I can see it on Instagram as well as highlight your submissions. I can't wait to see them. So thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you guys all next time.